Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to this Technic class. And uh, before we begin, could I ask you all to check that you are muted so that Peter's uh, <laughs> session isn't interrupted? Um, of course, if you have anything that you'd like to ask Peter during the session, you, um, uh, you need to unmute yourself and then mute again. So um, today's topic, I think, is all about playing with expression. So I will hand it over to Peter Wedland. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Gamba Society, Mary Aiden, and uh, all the people in the background who asked me to do another talk. And I thought it's time to speak about expressions and emotions, how we can bring this into our music when we play. I hope I achieve to give you some ideas and some stimulation for you to explore. I divided my talk in roughly three sections. First sections about 20 minutes, 50 to 20 minutes. I will share with you findings uh, when we, when it's speaking, when they speak about emotions and how to express them. So you don't need your while for the first 20 minutes. You could put your while to the side. I hold on it because I will play sometimes a few examples. Um, after 20 minutes roughly, I will ask you to take your while and then uh, we will do some exercise or yeah, try and things out, see how far we go with the time. And in the last five, eight, ten minutes, I come to the resume, and then we have also some time left for questions if you have. Just uh, to inform you, when I play double stops, you might hear the sound is cutting out. This might be down to your Wi Fi. If you connect it, with the cable, then it's probably more secure that, you, that my sound is not cut out. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Ibi just told me that I'm a bit quiet, I, but I'm trying to speak a bit out and slowly enough. Okay, when we look through tractates, we come across many descriptions how to play with expression and emotions. I would like to send you away right now and encourage you to look around and include your discovered in your claim, your discovering in your claim. But since you're here, I happily share some findings of mine with you. I will focus on examples of expressions and emotions and will give later in some exercises support how to do it. Ganassi mentioned in his regular Robertina from 1542-43 that one should copy, imitate the nature and says that the most natural instrument is the voice. He wants you to move your body according to the emotions you are trying to express. Your face, your mouth, eyes, neck and even your hair should be in total awe of what you are doing. One must also find the meaning of the phrases one is going to play and express. Reform them in the best possible way, he says. Rousseau mentioned in his Traité de la Viole from 1687, in the second part, chapter 4, he says, one must understand the music. One should understand the different emotions. One must get into the soul of the piece. Later, he says, one should not just play in time, one should play also with emotions. He explains the tact, the tactus is just depending on the notes, but the emotions are depending on talent and taste. He compares the style of two re uh, readers, one who just reads and someone who reads with declamation. Later he makes a nice comment about the treble viol. He says, the sound of the treble viol should flutter, schmeicheln, and should not be like the tone of the violin, who is stimulating, ermunternd. Leopold Mozart writes in his Gründliche Violinschule from 1787 about a good performer, play in order and with expression. Differentiate between strong and weak notes. Know what you want to do. Play with sensation. 
Quanz in his Versuch, eine Anweisung, die Flöte Traversie zu spielen, from 1752, about performing, you do not just play in one color. Explore all feelings with your notes. Are they flattering you? Make you sad, tender, joyful, naughty, serious, and more. Johann Gottlieb Matheson, in his das neu eröffnete Orchester from 1713, his new founded orchestra, he describes the characters of 17 different key signatures. 17. Some examples I would like to share with you. E minor, you can't attach anything funny to it. Never mind how hard one is trying, because he, the key signature, is very pensive, deep thinking, worried and sad, but you can still hope for comfort. Some little fast sections can be found in it, but it will be never jolly or funny. About E minor. D major is by nature a little bit sharp, stubborn and encouraging to make noise, be funny and feeling cheered up. About G minor. G minor is one of the best key signatures. Not just because he can combine seriousness with loveliness, no. He can also express being graceful, pleasant, tender, refreshing, longing, enjoyment, and at the same time be sorrowful and moderate, happy. Looking through the words Madison is using to describe the characteristics of other key signatures, I felt that we all can recognize them in our emotions. He uses words like sad, cheerful, wistful, despairing, apologetic, bizarre, brilliant, calm, good, sinister, anger, homesick, spooky, confident, aggressive, melancholic, sanguistic, peaceful, sorrowful, complaining, steadfast. No, noble, serenity, unresponded love, uncertain, frivolity, innocent, love, magnificent, guilty, nervous, anxious, helpless, stillness, rude, cheeky, charmant, desire, despair, sighing. So many words and more he uses to describe emotions which he attached to the different key signatures. Another fact of playing with expression emotions is to explore how we play different intervals, I think. We all know that a dissonance provokes different emotions than consonants. I would like to demonstrate what sort of reaction the different intervals provoke in you. So I try to play them at the same time first and then I play them one after each other. I hope you can hear them and the sound is not cut out.
put here the tension in some intervals and the relaxed feeling on the others. Um, I packed play them once just up, one after the other, just in case it was cut out. If you met me, you probably heard me saying that one of my favorite intervals is the minor six. Yeah, I asked often in concerts, listen where, where you hear minor six. If you give it, if you note that you're often in F to an A, is somewhere with another colleague of yours. I'm aiming always to play it with, a lots, with lots of warmth and sadness. The fifth is beautiful, the octave is beautiful. As you could hear, we find relaxation in the different sort of uh, notes. Larger intervals are more powerful than smaller intervals. We could play them accordingly, especially at the beginning of pieces. For example, for example Jenkins' four-part Fantasia number 14. It starts with a fourth interval, and I, I would like to play it by that outwards going, if you listen to the opening of it, please. Do it again. I think you noticed I used mostly open strings, very positive uh, approach to it, it's in D major. Uh, Mattheson says uh, a few things about the positive uh, character of a D major. The next example I would like to share is with you is the Fantasia number no. two, four part Fantasia by Jenkins um, in C minor. different character. Um, Matheson describes your C minor lovely um, and a little bit uh, life, a little bit of life. In this Fantasia number two, I think if you know, um, it's quite sort of forward going, but very, very friendly. And perhaps you noticed I played it without using any open string and I played it uh, in, I call it third position, to have so short strings as possible, shorter strings. I think make us uh, now softer. And if I play it um, in traditional ways, for example, with an open string, it sounds immediately hard. So uh, when I try to play, when I play this expression, I use my fingering to the mood what I would like to express. Mm. Repeated notes in opening I find often very percussion-like, so they give you a rhythm, a different character. Long notes are usually more important than shorter notes, as we all discovered and experience. And often you find tight over notes over a bar line forms a dissonance to another part of your consort. Um, coming back to other uh, uh, writings, uh, Agricola, student of Quanz, Anleitung zur Singkunst von 1757. If you, he said something very interesting, I thought, and this could apply to all of us in our judgment. If you do not like your singing, the audience won't like it either. So try to like the notes you're making, and then, be, then you can be sure the listener will like it as well, and your colleagues. 
Marem says in Book 1 in 1686, it is necessary that the wrist of your right hand is flexible. It will result in a beautiful stroke and nice play. Fokkeren, in his letter to Prince Friedrich Wilhelm, uh, writes a few things. I quite like to refer just to two points uh, about, um, yeah, uh, the bow stirs the soul. The bow is stirring the soul. He gives the character of all types of music. And later he says, he, the, to the bow, he refers to the second middle finger as being the prime finger, the prime finger to give character and expression to the music. And one must make sure that the thumb is placed lightly on the stick. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I, we have all different bow holes, and I don't say one way is the, is the best or is the only way. There are many different you know, grades and shadings of how one can hold a, hold a bow. I find very important that when we hold the bow, regardless how, we must be always able to have flexibility and never reach with our bow a deadlock. When some people hold the bow, uh, laying the hair, touching where the thumb is uh, attached to the hand, and put your fingers around and the thumb sticks out. Some people can play excellent with this, I can't. Uh, some people, also, I don't know if you saw it sometimes, you see also some, some paintings, some people have the thumb, also have the bow hair touching where the finger comes from the hand, and the thumb is pressing underneath the stick, pressing underneath. And the Fokker says, lay the finger on the stick. And the middle finger is through the hair, as we all know. But the thumb should rest on the stick and not holding tight to the stick. This gives us the possibility to be more flexible. Now I'm sharing with you some um, instructions how to play. Ganassi mentioned a shivering with your left finger and with your bow arm to give your tone more expression. Is it because he wants to copy the, 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 the vibrato from this uh, human voice? We don't know, he doesn't give exact exercises, but it might be a sort of bow vibrato. Or even vibrato with your left finger. We don't know really what he refers to. To be assumed gives one some advice how to play. In the first part of the airs from 1605 in the piece Death, he says, play is passionate after every strain. He refers to about three bars, play is passionate. And every time this piece, these three bars comes in the piece, play is passion. So I try to play these three pieces. I don't know if I succeed, but I try to play, be passionate. And this comes throughout the piece again and again. Very introvert, I feel, very, yeah, very connected, not loud and controlled. Marais, in Book 3, 1711, introduces the enflé, which is a clear sign to express, which means play with expression. You will give the piece the soul, or one should throw more or less weight, make a crescendo. He also mentioned unison. Again, you, he, he says if the neck is up and down, you play unison, so you make this not stronger. And he also introduced, of course, vibrato and flat more to express feelings. He also says, where I wrote it in my music, I expect you to do it, but you taste after you can judge it you, from your own taste to add more of this double stops of vibrato you like through your own uh, taste. I did once an experiment with putting two versions of Fantasias by Purcell in front of students. One with no dynamics and one with lots of dynamics written in by the publisher uh, from 1920. 
every bar had a dynamic mark. And uh, we could argue with the style, of course, of the dynamics put in, but we noticed we played different. Do we need written in dynamics until we risk to do dynamics? I don't think so. We don't need written in dynamics, but we should be aware. So if you see something, you respond to it. So it's something to, to yeah, keep in mind. What else can us help to play the piece with emotions? There are titles, we can interpret them. Yeah, we often have funny titles, Michael East, I think, Hold Fast, or other, other titles, I think you come across many, or To Be As Hume, uh, 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 Tickle Me Quickly, or something. There are many, many indications how you could play with pieces, other humorous or sad. And yeah, if the title doesn't give anything away, we often play all the pieces with words. Then, of course, we follow the text. Playing with emotions. First of all, practical things we should make sure it is uh, possible to play with emotions. Make sure your instrument is in good order. Your instrument must be in tune. The strings must be yeah, in reasonable, in good condition. The frets, what's, what we often forget, when we play a lot, our gut frets, they get worn out. So if your frets are very flat, then you can't make such a nice note than when you put a fresh fret on. If you don't want to change your fret, and if you look, if you push your string to the side and see, oh, this fret is very heavily used, you can loosen your frets by putting them a tiny bit up, move them three millimeters, so the used part comes in the middle between the strings, and you can play on the same fret another half a year. Um, is the bridge in the right place? Is the bow hair enough? Has the bow hair enough frozen? Is the bow head tension quite high? I quite often mention this. I see often people not turning the screw or, or putting the frog deep enough or not enough leather in. Uh, I think with higher hair tension, you are much more able to play clearer notes and clearer um, expressions. And of course, the rosin. Be in a free spirit when you play a piece. Be connected in the present. Do not drift away thinking if you locked the front door, did I turn the heating down, or I have to do this email or this email. If you're nervous, then some unwanted emotions have taken over you. Try to overcome them by replacing them with the emotions of the peace. Then there is no space for the nervousness anymore, hopefully. Never play two notes the same. In nature, nothing is absolutely identical. Every snowflake has a different shape. Sing your notes when you play. Change your bow speed according to the expression you want to give. Change the bow weight. Change the place where you put your bow on. We get some instructions where to put the bow on. I think Fokker says three fingers, Thomas May says four fingers. Thomas May mentioned as well, if you have critical listeners, go further away. This could apply to us as well when we record ourselves, then we go a bit further away from the bridge to make sure it's more secure. Explore different areas on your bow. And I think this is something very important we don't do often enough. We mostly play the upper third of our bow. Upper third. We can play very gentle and sweet there, but how often do we explore the middle of the bow or the lower part of the bow? I don't, um, I don't want to encourage you to play all the pieces on the lower end of the bow, but I would like to encourage you to practice there. The, the side effect is that you gain much more control about what you're doing. When you, do a when you can do it beautiful in this area, then it's very, very easy here. Create a story when you play. Create a picture or mood or color. I often write in front of a piece some picture, some color, some story to put me in the right mood before I play. Select the important notes from your melody and re realize where the phrases are. Where is the climax of your melody? Have a plan when playing. Play with understanding. 
play the piece even if you studied it already for hours with excitement and curiosity you had when you played for the first time. Oh, I practiced this note one hour and the next day or next day and two weeks later I practiced it already. And yeah, be really excited every time you play. Move your body according to your expression. Thomas Mays makes a comment about this. When you're cold, you should play your while, he says. Implies we move, we have to move somehow. Now, I would like to try to do some exercises. If you can get your wilds, uh, it could be tenor, the treble, bass. Um, we will you play all the same notes, take your time. And I would like to uh, yeah, see how long we have. Uh, but do a few bow exercises on a little scale, starting on G, G, A, B, C, D. Five notes, G, A, B, C, D. So I quite like to be played together, uh, just to find the range I would like to work on, that we are secure with our notes. G to D, on, the, on any while. Three, each note one, one beat and one advance. Three, four. <laughs> You could choose either open string or stop string. If you stop the highest note, you play the scale on two strings. If you play open strings, you use three strings. It's depending on the expression you want to give to your line. Again, three, four. Mm -hmm. five notes for, uh, for a little while and down now if you notice is your string crossing clean with your bow, bow change if you go from the G to A um, on any while G to A and from C to D when you do the string crossing are you changing the bow at the same time when you change the string be very very clean about this now I would like to start with uh, controlling our natural bowing the natural way to on the wild is that the push bow has more weight and the back bow is the lighter one. And I would like to do it by playing every note twice. I will have roughly minims or roughly crotchets roughly on 60 and we play minims. I demonstrate just the beginning, let me do it together, please. Three, four. Each note twice, each note is one minute long. I count 60, this is quite a nice pulse. You can, if you have a clock, you can see the, the, the second, and this gives you the 60. Three, four. <laughs> sound very easy and uh, not difficult. I quite like to do it again and make sure that we have the difference of the weight feeling just by having more weight or more speed in the push bow and less in the back bow. We change the speed and, uh, to the, in the back bow lighter. Ideally we don't change the position on our while. I don't want to confuse matters. Just by adding weight and speed or taking weight away and take speed away. Same again. Three, four. <laughs>
about really being very controlled about the sound you're producing. Are all the notes beautiful ringing? Are they resonating with your vibe? The next rhythm would be a dotted minimum crotchet. So we start with a push bow on the dotted minimum and then need to go back on the back bow and the crotchet. So this implies that we need to be quite quick going back with less weight so we can start the tip again. We can do it straight away, the same little scale starting on G. After 60 pulse, ready, three, four. <laughs> challenging to keep it steady yeah but I think what I saw I can't say what I heard but what I saw you seem to do it very well now we'll do it in the other way around we're playing a crotchet and then the same dotted semi break a dotted minimum sorry crotchet and dotted minimum now this time we play a loud crotchet and a very soft dotted minimum 60 pulse again three four because we need to move the bow a lot on the first note and have all the bow left for the dotted minimum in the back bow. Now we do the other way around, we play the crotchet very quiet and the dotted minimum stronger. This will give us some challenge to control our bow weight and speed. It's all about gaining control what we are doing with our bow. So we play um, a soft crotchet and a strong dotted minimum. And good luck everybody, we're going again for 60. Three, four. Challenging, I think. It's something to do in different registers. You can play stopped, as I said, you can play on one string, you can play on lower strings. Just take any sort of little scale out to practice the control, and the control of your bow. I would like now to spend some time on making crescendo on one note. Uh, we're going again, we're having four crotchets, 60 each beat roughly, and we playing semi briefs, making a crescendo and decrescendo on one note. I just demonstrate. Three, four, one. changing the position on the string. I just want that we do it with adding speed and weight and taking both away. Just try to maintain the same position on the string where the bow touches. 60 again. We're starting on the first note. Four beats each note and on every note a nice crescendo and decrescendo. Three, four.
lot of um, forward thinking. How much can I use for the forward part, for the strong part? How much of my bow? How little bow I have left on either side? If we don't run out of bow. Now we do the same, but making a crescendo on the first note, on the decrescendo on the second note. So we have a climax always at the end, in the beginning of a note, either in forte or in piano. Same again, we start in G. We could aim again to 60. This is quite slow. Three, four. play without losing the sound. Try to explore the range of your viol also in the pianissimo. Now the last of this uh, sort of dynamic exercise with the, yeah, with the long notes, with semi briefs, we make a crescendo to the climax, to the highest note. I would then advise, I play always the top, the, the top note open, so everybody please play the top note open, so the climax is on the highest note and then we go on up so pianissimo when we finish. A crescendo over five bars and a decrescendo over four bars. One, two, three, four. Make sure when we start quiet and end quiet that the string still resonates. Now I think uh, yeah we could do the same exercises in, in crotchets. I think yeah we have a tiny bit time left before I come to the end of my talk and we can uh, come to questions. Now I would like to do a bit um, quicker dynamic change by uh, repeating the notes of it by playing crotchets. Four times each note, and we make a crescendo over each bar, and starting every bar with pianissimo. I just demonstrate a bit quicker. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four notes crescendo, and starting again the next bar always with a pianissimo. See how it feels. You will notice your bow needs a lot of control by doing this. Good luck after four crotchets. I'm a bit quicker. One, two, three, four. and going to piano at the end of each bar, please. Starting fortissimo and going very softly towards the end of each end bar. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
It's all about using your space from your bow according to the volume you would like to explore. Now, another point, perhaps in, in um, remembrance of Olga Nassi, um, I quite like to make more flexibility in your middle finger, which is the soul as focuses of making notes. And to practice the movement of a middle finger, you can, um, yeah, in modern terms, we make a bow vibrato. I just move my middle finger. You can, on the desk and while you might pull a tiny bit, on the bigger vibes I do turning my wrist and use my middle finger as a lever. This, if you can do this, is an indication how relaxed your right arm is and how relaxed your, your wrist is and your fingers. I demonstrate once more. I think you can see it. Uh, on the desk count, this might be enough. I'm pulling. On the bigger while, I do turn my wrist. It is the contrast. When I turn my wrist, I'm not moving my arm up and down, I'm just turning my wrist. My forearm stays at the same place, not, not this. This is quite difficult to do. I just demonstrate on one string. I accelerate. Of course, you, you can say we don't need this in, when we play concert music, but there is, I think, is it not Jenkins or Laws, where we have this. Uh, I come across this. Um, it comes, uh, we, we, we are faced sometimes with this sort of technique. So let us try uh, again in a controlled way four turns or four pullings on each bar and the same phrase. I demonstrate what I mean. Four, three, four, let us try this all together after four. One, also if you're interested in the speed, we roughly 72 crotchets. One, two, three, four. Stop with our bow, this tone is constant, the, the, the string is constantly vibrating. Yeah, this is something just to loosen your joints. You can control this uh, totally. Thank you very much. So, and there are many, many a little sort of exercises about bow control you can explore and then apply this to the musical phrases and to the expressions you want to give. If you can't control this, you can't express it. Now, I would like to come to a few final words. Working on expressions. Learn how to control your bow movement. A. Bow hold. That you are free by holding the bow, that you do not get to limit limitations. Move your little joints, move your bigger joints, analyze your arm weight you can use. I never say you press down, I always say you can use your arm weight. Play with dynamic, find surprises. Find surprises in melodies, makes the audience listen to you. Yeah? Find surprises. Find different colors in your notes, as we heard before. Enjoy the silence. Enjoy the silence between notes. As you see, I'm having my bow rest on the string. This is one way to do. And have totally stillness. Not, not, not moving around, really. And feel the light light balance between point where the, where the hair touches the string and your arm, the balance. And this is the silence. Very still. The whole body plays with the silence in stillness. 
When playing a phrase which has a short rest in, in it, connect the phrase or the rest. Connect the phrase or the rest. How? By playing the note after the rest in the same volume you left the previous note. Keep also your body connected and do not relax in the rest. It will break the phrase. Look for the soul of your instrument. It is the sound post and the space around it. Bring the air in your while in motion and include the air from the place you are sitting in. It might be very small, it might be very big. Play with the air you want to fill. Not just listen here. Open your eyes, uh, your ears and your body to the surrounding where you're playing in. Um, feel the vibration of the strings in your fingertips of the left hand. If you press too hard, you can't feel them. Try to get the sensation of your fingertips when you play. And also the vibration of the string I sometimes feel in my middle finger, which is connected with the bow head to the string. Try to explore this. If you feel it, I think everybody of us can feel it. It's a sign that you really relax with your, with your middle finger. And finally, feel emotions. You need to be able to feel your emotions. Um, I don't know, I would like to try an experiment. Uh, Mary asked me to play a calm song at the beginning for the little newborn person in this world. And I'd quite like to play that screen sleep, starting on C. I want to try to play it really relaxed. We're starting on C. It is good uh, um, to have some tunes or play some tunes by memory. Simple tunes, you know, from your childhood, or you can remember. Let us try green sleeves and um, give it some feeling from your heart. Da, da, di, one, two, three. Until the tone disappeared. If we are wondering how the musicians in the past expressed themselves, how they, how they played, we should not forget that we, between them and us is just a time gap of around 300 to 400 years. This is about six generations. I believe that then and today the emotions were the same. We just should explore how we can express ourselves through the beautiful instrument we have chosen to play. I wish you an exciting journey when you learn to feel and express yourself with your instrument. Thank you very much. So if you have a question, you can voice them. Thank you very much. I think we're going to open up the floor now for any questions. Thank you very much, Peter. Has anybody got anything they would like to ask Peter?
<coughs> Can I trip it? Marilyn has a hand up. Yeah, uh, Thomas has a hand up, maybe. Just a, a, a very small point, Peter, and I was wondering whether you ever use the lifting the bow off altogether in consort music, in other words, letting instruments speak or resonate without the bow on at all, and conversely, whether you would ever encourage us to use slurs in consort music. Neither is, of course, notated, I know that, but it's a sort of an expressive device that might be quite useful. Very, very good question, very interesting question. What I would do, yes, I would uh, do anything to express feelings in, in context with the piece and with your colleagues. There are different, um, different uh, fashions which are more general uh, accepted or not. And I think we should explore definitely in our rehearsal places how we can support the meaning of the music. I think uh, if we uh, you know, play personal fantasia sometimes, we have a, a tucked bow. Uh, we're using sometimes tucked bow and dun, da da mm -hmm. It's a very nice effect. It's not mentioned. Yeah, but uh, it, it makes sense in some places. And we could play it, of course, in, in each uh, with a set of bow stroke. But with slurring, man, if we think the voice is the best instrument, and the voice when they, when they sing uh, uh, on one syllable many many notes, mm. they're slurring. Yeah. So, says, copy the, the copy the voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Marilyn Pocock has a question. Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> Peter, you mentioned the enclave. Yes. Obviously, there's a lot to fit into this session. Yes. I... Do you want to say how to produce an enclave? Yeah, it's uh, as Marie says, it's an ex add some expression, yeah, emotions to it. But he says also by doing a swell, you do a swell, uh, in indicating just. I think he refers to weight, but uh, just weight uh, makes don't leave it harsh. So I think as well, weight always is connected to weight. And he decides uh, he makes a difference between where he puts the enfle, where it starts, mm. at the beginning, in the middle, or towards the end. You know, depending on much, how much time you have. But I think <laughs> it is always starting very soft and has a really uh, crescendo. So a, li a, life, a, a li lightened life the note. Make the note alive. Or more or less what we practice in our exercise on the semi-brief. Make a message watcher. They yeah, sometimes start loud or soft or soft and loud, and often also crescendo into the middle and then soften again. It's a, it's a very uh, natural uh, ornament. Should be handled you, with care. Should be handled with care. Are you just using bow speed or are you using pressure from your middle? I, I use, uh, my, you can go to a limit without uh, exceeding speed, but I make a combination between speed and weight always. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Marilyn. Any other questions? No. Well, I... how, emo how emotionally oh. does he want okay. us to get involved? I think uh, if, if you listen to Madison's description of the key signatures, I think people uh, need to be encouraged to be emotionally in, involved with this. Of course, we shouldn't start crying on the stage. Uh, I think it happened once with me, uh, but, yeah, but it is, it's a difficult, um, difficult um, grad where you walk on. You, you, of course, when you play, you're also a performer, but you represent some emotions. So perhaps like an actor mm, in, in, a, in a positive way. Yeah. But there's no limits to emotions. No limits. <laughs> yeah. Isn't there a saying that goes something like um, a performer should create emotion, not get emotional? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, if... Thank you. Thank you. I hope you get, got some ideas to explore and risk something and, and, and express 
or find the meaning of the piece in this moment you, you perform today? Well, thank you very much, Peter. I think we should give a round of applause. I think I did give a round of applause earlier, but mine was new. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I also forgot to mention to everybody um, earlier on that at this point, at the end of the session, I'm going to form breakout rooms. And you, you, it's up to you whether you'd like to attend the chat, uh, which is about to happen. Um, if you don't wish to attend, that's fine, and you can leave now. Uh, before you leave, don't forget to leave a donation if you can uh, for this online uh, session, which is otherwise free to members. And past sessions can be viewed at the website, don't forget. Um, and details of future sessions, invitations will be sent to you uh, by email. Um, so I think that's probably it. Uh, Before you go, Ibi, can I, on, on behalf of everyone, just thank Peter and also you and Mary for setting it all up. Thanks very much, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to form, form the breakout rooms now. I've just pressed the button. And I think you might get a warning. Here we go. Okay, I join a breakout room, yeah. Just sit there. Has he done it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's only ten of us going down. Nine, nine people oh, there still, we are. Joy still involved. Oh. That's, that's all of us on screen now. Right. So, is this it? No, oh, not anymore, there isn't. Why?